بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Pediatric Inflammatory Multisystem Syndrome Why does it happen? When does it happen? What are the criteria for diagnosing? And how to support these patients? Hello everyone, this is Dr. Abdul I'm one of the pediatric consultants and today I will talk about the pediatric inflammatory multisystem syndrome. This video is essentially for healthcare professionals. However, if you're a father or a mother of a child who recently have, during May, June time, 2020, who has been having fever that doesn't settle, redness in the eyes, rash, being just generally unwell, you need to take the child straight away to the hospital or to the GP and he makes referral to us. Now, we can all accept the fact that SARS-CoV-2 infection is of generally mild illness in children. And it comes with a bit of fever, cough, um, tummy pain, gastroenteritis picture, and it settles. What we have seen recently is a small proportion of these children coming after two to four weeks with what we call it the pediatric inflammatory multisystem syndrome. So why is it happening? Probably it's because of altered immune response so after the initial viral infection, there can be an autoimmunity against the self-antigens, and that's because of not enough amount of interleukin-6, CD8 lymphocytes formed, and that's what makes this sort of autoimmunity against the self-antigens. When does it happen? Usually two to four weeks after the initial infection. How to diagnose these conditions? The WHO, the European Center of Disease Control, the Royal College of Pediatric and Child Health and many other agencies, they put similar criteria to each other, which are summarized as being fever for three or more days that doesn't settle, non-perion conjunctivitis, rash, strawberry tongue, cervical lymphadenopathy, and of course these patients being just generally unwell, plus raised inflammatory markers, high CRP, high ferritin, LDH, CK, the full blood count, you'll see the picture, and here you may not find this lymphopenia that you see in the initial COVID infection. Here you will see either normal or high lymphocytic counts. Keep an eye in the full blood count if there's any thrombocytopenia, and I will tell you why later. Plus, absence of any other reason causing this illness like sort of streptococcal infection or meningococcal infection or any other sort of infections. Okay. How to assist these children? The main fear for a pediatrician is to have a child with myocarditis who can develop heart failure and subsequent coronary complications and aneurysm. Firstly, we know that these patients are in pain and they are pyrexial, so they will have a tachycardia. And tachycardia is not the only thing that tells you the child is in a heart failure. What's the blood pressure of these patients? How is the cap refill? Are these patients congested? Is there any congested liver? Are there any congested neck veins? Are they breathless or thopnic? So this gives you the overall picture of this child being in a heart failure or not. But only tachycardia doesn't tell you much. You need to control the temperature as much as possible. You need to reassess the child, measure the blood pressure, and all these things we've mentioned about. If you think this child is hypotensive, the first thing to consider are aliquots of saline, 10 ml per cage, boluses, and then recheck the blood pressure and assess where you are. Always ever discuss with the STRS and the tertiary centers and the intensive care team. While you're doing that, ask someone else to consider to prepare for the IVIG. So the main thing to protect the heart is gonna be giving intravenous immunoglobulins and also aspirin. Let us put it in an example. If you have got a two years old child in front of you with a heart rate of 160 and the child is pyrexial 39, if the blood pressure of this child is okay, like 100 over 60, and there's no congested liver, the child is not breathless, so probably this child is not in heart failure, maybe myocarditis, so you have checked for the other things, you've checked, you've sent for CK, D-dimer, all the enzymes, all the other enzymes, troponin, and discussed also, you've done the ECG. There are some suggestive findings in the ECG. 
sinus tachycardia, distorted or inverted T waves, small magnitude of the QRS complex, or a bit prolonged PR interval, but all these are suggestive. So you put things together and then discuss with the tertiary center and see where you are, assess these patients. The message is putting these patients through inotropes, intubation, is not without complication. Of course, if you see this child shocked and needing one bolus after the other, the first thing to consider is giving peripheral dopamine and again start for escalation and referring to tertiary centers. Again, with the management of these patients, you have to give antibiotics because it's impossible to rule out sepsis at this stage. Keftrexone, 50 mg per cage, just give it as a bolus. Then safe transport to these patients, which we have to appreciate it. they are critically ill if they needed the transport and they have to be associated with anesthetists and a pediatrician, if possible. In the intensive care, they will do escalation of management, they will carry on with the IVIG, they will establish the central axis and they will arrange for echocardiography and they will repeat the blood test again and again and again every now and then. I told you at the beginning, once you're requesting these investigations, keep an eye on the platelet count. If I tell you that this child's temperature has been prolonged more than 10 days and having thrombocytopenia and high ferritin and the child is clinically unwell in front of you, you have to consider macrophage activation syndrome, which has been recently reported in these patients. Discuss with the team, involve rheumatologists, involve intensivists, involve cardiologists, and stay safe. I hope you benefit from this video. Please ask questions, add as you like. Thank you so much and see you next time.